Oh, look at this beauty. Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So it's not too often that I buy another scooter for myself. I kind of feel like I have a pretty good collection of scooters I just like to use and I'm pretty content with that. But I had some friends say, oh, you don't ride many of your nice scooters that much and they're in back garage. And I kind of had it set in my mind, I kind of want a beater. Like a beater, you can just park outside, not care, and boy, did I find a beater. It might be the ultimate beater, or jalopy, or whatever you want to call it. Um, just poor condition. But in some ways, this thing's a gem in the rough, and I'll get to that a little bit later in the video. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a sad story. It was a customer of the shop. Uh, he was going to come in to have some mods. This, the scooter looked to be in really, really nice tip-top condition for a 2008 Vespa GTS 250. So this is the predecessor to the all-popular GTS 300. Pretty similar body for the most part. A little bit downsized motor, fuel injected. Uh, for the most part, they're quite reliable. Definitely over to the GT200, they made a lot of improvements to this model starting in 2006. It's a 2008 model, so it's kind of towards the end of the run. 2009 was the last years for the 250s. Um, but he pretty much sent it sailing down the road. And unfortunately, the scooter took quite a brunt. And not only does the right side look bad, the left side's got a big dinger in the cowl. Not nearly as bad as this. I'm at this. This was sent down the road with some speed. Uh, the nice thing is you can get all these plastic parts, the floorboard, and the glove box makes for a perfect winter project. It makes for lots of videos for everybody. So I'm going to do a lot of the how-to videos on servicing this up. Uh, and I can't help myself. I said I'd leave it as a beater, but I'm already excited to put some mods on this bike, and I'm going to do that a little bit later in this video. So I'm going to go freeform pretty much on the handlebars shortly. But I'll probably take it to a body shop that I know of. They're gonna hate me. I already sent some photos to one of my body man that does paint body work, and he just didn't respond to me. Pretty much says, oh, this thing's a mess. Uh, but pretty much the labor of love, I mean, he's restored vintage Vespas that look worse than this, just hammer and dolly work on the sheet metal. And on a Vespa, all this is sheet metal. You can see everything with a little bit of rust on it. That's all sheet metal. And there's lots of tricks to the trades. Everything from the old classic hammer and dolly work to where there's welded little rivets that you can slide hammer the dents out and get it pretty close to the original shape and just skim coat it, prime it, and respray it. Hopefully I don't take it too far. I do not want to build a custom. I keep on repeating to myself, I do not want to build a custom like my robot bike. I want to have something that if it falls back over, I'm not, not crying about it. Um, I kind of sparked an interest back in this bike after riding my uh, Pacifico bike. I have several videos from about six, seven years ago. Uh, that's still down in Mexico, and I had the opportunity to ride around down in Mexico, still, still around. So let's get right to it. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Fortunately, it's super low miles, about 6,000 miles. Uh, it runs perfect. Doesn't have a bent fork, remarkably. Uh, a lot of times when they crash this heavily, they could have a completely bent frame or more likely a bent fork or sometimes even damage to the radiators behind there. It doesn't have any of that. It's just all cosmetic. It rides perfectly straight down the road. Uh, the prior owner even put fairly brand new uh, City Grip tires, replaced those original tires that were on it. It had 16-year-old tires on it, and he replaced those. So um, all set for the tires. I'll do a little bit of service on some future videos. But today, let's get these handlebars apart. I have all sorts of fun stuff I'm gonna get installed. All right, so just got back from the warehouse. You know the problem is when I own a scooter, I go on a shopping spree in the warehouse of Scooter West. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. It's all stuff on the handlebars. Uh, of course, I have great future plans for this thing to clean up much more cosmetically, but that's all saved for future videos. I have some ideas of the color scheme I'm gonna do. It's almost gonna look like a Raiders bike, and I hate the Raiders, but I think I could do some cool graphics on it, all on, on a budget, you know? So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Obviously the accessories, they kind of uh, break the bank a little bit, but I kind of want them, so 
So first of all, I'm going to do the LED headlight. I feature this, of course, I think in two other videos, two or three other videos. And the Scooter West part number is 641080. Pretty much fits all the GTS models, GT200s even. So any large frame Vespa, GT200, GTS250, the 300s, if it was between 2005 and 2019, this will fit it. Doesn't fit the GTV model, we have a dedicated model uh, headlight. So again, it looks super aggressive, super wicked, and it functions really good. Even has a pretty rad running light. So excited to put this in. So we got the headlight. Uh, gotta get rid of those stock hard grips on there. I thought about doing the heated grips, but um, go a little bit more low budget. The heated grips cost Cost of my already spending an arm and leg on the headlight. So we're gonna do the black Vans grips. Just search Vans grips on the Scooter West web store. There's so many different colors. Uh, I wanna put the bar in, so we're gonna actually cut the ends out. But they're, I think they're a pretty cool style. Pretty excited to put those on this. Uh, next part we're gonna put on is some black levers. I could do the the most popular option is our powder coated stock black levers. I'm just gonna go one step above. Not the adjustable levers, those are kinda out of my budget today, but I'm gonna do the machined aluminum pair of black levers. So they're black anodized, so they're very durable. It's not a powder coat finish. Uh, 497042-BZBK. And they pretty much are patterned after stock, but they look a lot cooler. Got some engraving in there. And, such. So we'll put those on when we have the handlebars all apart. A uh, pair of black bar end weights to replace the slightly corroded um, chrome ones. Scooter West part number 582034BK, you'll need a pair of them. Uh, if you're looking for the larger ones, I think they're part number 599399-BK. You find the larger bar and weights that come with the top case. A lot of people go for those ones. Um, there's a couple problems with the scooter. First of all, the horn switch is just straight missing because sometimes when you wreck a scooter, your knees or clothing catches the switches and breaks them. Uh, also, the turnstile switch just kind of works from time to time. This scooter has always been close to the coast. I could see some of the minor corrosion on the brake caliper and the um, center stand. And you know, 16 years of that coastal sea mist, it gets to the contacts in these switches. So the switches are rather inexpensive. I've talked about replacing all the switches in the past, but for this era of scooter, you got pretty much five different switches you'll need. Uh, the turn sail switch being 294723, original Piaggio part. Uh, the horn button, which is straight missing, the square style one, which is right there. And that's part number 641358. Start button, might as well replace that too. Don't want to get uh, stranded because the start button starts to fail. Uh, 638975. And we'll do the kill switch and also the headlight switch, 294877. Kill switch is working fine, but it's pretty inexpensive. We're in there, you put a nice brand new one. It's nice and juicy red, looks all nice and new. So put those all in. And the last two items I'm gonna do, somebody already put one of the Scooter West uh, cigarette lighter or 12 volt outlets. It's not very useful in this day of age, but most of the parts are there. You already got the, the, the kneecap. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and drill the hole a little bit larger. We have this available, PP9. It's got the USB um, type C quick charge. So it's perfect for charging a phone. And the last thing I'm gonna put on it's a new product that we're gonna start carrying at Scooter West. Um, so it's the SP Connect Mirror Mount Pro. And this works excellent on the Vespa mirror stems. Uh, it's a little more tidy than the Ram. Uh, the downside is you do need a specific case or you could use one of their holders or pouches to hold the phone. And again, just look out for future videos. I'll talk about all these new products. But the part number for the Mirror Mount Pro is 06. 360280, and we'll get those on the Scooter West website. There's also a lower end mirror mount. Um, that's actually the, used as the original OEM Piaggio Vespa phone solution. That's a little bit tidier. It's made of plastic, but the mirror mount pro is only a little bit, little bit more costly. It's made of metal, it's really, really high quality. And when you're hanging a thousand plus dollar phone from 
the handlebars, you kind of want to have the best solution. So also I have a case for my 12 Max Pro iPhone, whatever. They have cases for Samsung and the Google phones, any of the flagship phones, because this is a kind of a high-end product. But the case for this phone, you're looking at 0636-0221. So it doesn't include the phone, but have a pretty sweet case. That's also, I'll show you in future videos that will uh, charge through the QI or the MagSafe, which is really, really neat. So the last thing I put on is OEM pattern black mirrors. We have so many different mirror options available for the Vespa GTS. Um, these are just pattern after the stock ones. Maybe I'm just conservative. The round look works good with the Vespa and um, I kind of like the length. I would maybe want shorter ones because I like lane splitting sometimes and filtering here in California, you're allowed to do that. But I do like seeing past my shoulder. So I tell you the, the stock style mirrors are always the best for that. CM073404-BK is the black pair of mirrors that we have available. All right, so let's get right to it. This whole video is gonna be sped up quite a bit. It's because there's so many different accessories. Of course, you can look in the past. I have lots of detailed videos of how to install each of these accessories. Um, but we gotta get the rack out of the way. So we put this pretty nice original Piaggio rack, but it's got some pitting. I either steel wool it, but I think ultimately is what I'm going to do with it is uh, go send it out for powder coat. Um, you know, ideally you just buy a new rack that's already factory powder coated, a really nice finish from Vespa already, or you could buy chrome if that's the style you're looking for. But I think I'm going to switch this this scooter up a bit, kind of give it a more sporty appearance. Um, and like I said. It's probably gonna end up looking like a Raiders bike with black and silver, but you know, this is what I got to work with. I'm on a budget. This is what I'm using here. And this is my winter project. So get the rack out of the way. And then we'll just, just dismantle the handlebars. So you're wondering why I'm strategically replacing a lot of these parts. This headlight's been kissed by the road. Uh, there's pitting in there. You can see all the pitting. The headlight actually just doesn't work that well. You got bent levers, you got scraped up mirrors that are bent in, and then the switches that are busted out. So might as well just replace all those parts with up upgraded parts. All right, so let's first of all get these levers out of the way and get a 10 millimeter combination wrench, flat blade screwdriver, and before you just bolt the levers on, I can tell these screws and the pivots are very, very dry. Yeah, there's no grease on there. So, and put your hands underneath the levers because you're gonna have some washers drop off. Look at all that dryness. And the grips, well, they're not too useful. You could use compressed air just to blow them off. But a lot of times if you just kind of throw the grips away, just take a knife. You know, the grips have a little bit of wear and they're hard. You just take a knife, give it a couple slices and they'll peel right off without quite a bit of ease. So the grips, when you buy standard 7A grips, you're gonna see that one's a little bit larger. And the reason being is that's the one that goes over your throttle tube. So we're gonna hold off on this grip because I'll size that to when we get the, um, the handlebar covers back on. So you can si kind of see the grip right there. It's, um, you can see it doesn't have a hollow in. Uh, here in the workshop, I do have a specialized tool that will punch that out. But if you're very careful with a sharp knife, obviously this is not the smartest idea, poking towards my hands, but you could just carefully carve the end of the grip out. And remember, you got the bar and weight that's gonna cover it. So yeah, don't worry about it. You know, it's made of rubber, so the grip will cut pretty easily with a sharp knife. All right, so I have compressed air. I see the little Vans logo. I'm gonna nerd out and have it face me when you're riding it. You can kind of roll the grip, start to get it on there. And oftentimes you could push it pretty far. It's pretty noisy. And I'm using like a blowgun tip. We're pretty close, so. 
nice and free. And it's on there pretty, pretty nice. And if you want to rotate it, you can still get the, just a little compressed air will kind of um, allow you to rotate the grip or even pull a little bit closer. But it looks pretty good right there. And we'll be able to put the black bar in weight and we'll cover up that cut in. Looks good, nice and tight on there. And like I said, I'll come back to this one a little bit later. Uh, while you got the compressed air, kind of probably should be wearing safety glasses doing that. Um, but we'll get the levers in there. So first of all, these pistons for the brake calipers, they need a bit of grease on both, both sides. So I'll take the Maxima waterproof grease, part number from Scooter West is just grease. Um, nice thick tacky grease, works great on two wheelers. Just a little dab will do on both sides. And this will make your brake action just so much smoother. Sometimes you have like a crunchy feel, it's because your brake lever pivots are very dry. So a little bit of grease in there, drop those washers right into those wells and a little bit of grease on top. Do the same for the bottom washer. They're both, both, both identical. They're like a hardened washer. Get the nut back in place. Make sure it works good. It feels really, really nice. Um, smooth action now that there's grease on the pivot more than anything. And while you're at it, make sure your brake light switches work. Uh, sometimes corrosion kind of takes those out over time or they just fail. And I've covered the brake light switches in the past. There's two different types for the Vespas. Even without the dash on, we'll be able to turn the bike on. You see the brake lights on, you could actually push the piston in. Make sure this one's working. There's one more thing I'm going to grease before we put it together. Uh, when I was riding, the speedometer needle just flutters. It looks like a, a wagging dog tail. And it's usually because the cable is not broken. There's just no grease. See, I just pulled it right out. And it's got the kind of square end on the bottom. Just take a small amount of grease. You don't need much. Kind of should be wearing gloves for all this. And pretty much the whole length, just put a really thin coat. And towards the top, sometimes I say don't put too much grease towards the top. I put a small amount um, because sometimes it will wick its way up into the speedometer assembly. And to put that back in, you thread this through. Obviously, if the cable's broken, uh, you're going to need to go a little bit further and replace the whole cable. And I'd always recommend just replacing the whole housing and this inner cable that spins. So these old school sco scooters, that don't have electronic speedometer sensors, uh, they use that mechanical cable spins and that's what um, turns the speedometer and ticks over the odometer. Go ahead and replace the headlight assembly, pretty straightforward. Remove these big long self-tapping screws that thread into the plastic. Pretty easy and straightforward. And we'll just replace this whole entire assembly with that LED assembly. All right, and the last fastener, pretty straightforward. You just use the new headlight fastener. It's all stainless steel machine screws versus those self tapping plastic screws. So we got that all installed. Then we'll move on to the rear handlebar cover. We'll get all those switches replaced. Pretty straightforward to change those all out. All right, so the turn cell switch is the only switch that will require a Phillips screwdriver. And they do have washers on them as well. Take extra care threading these uh, screws into the plastic because by this time, you know, the scooter's old enough that the plastic's starting to get brittle. And on the other switches from the backside, you'll find little tabs. You use either a small screwdriver or even the tip of this knife like I'm doing to push these switches right out. So you push the little tab and it releases the switches from the plastic housing. It pretty much repeat that with all four switches with the exception of that turn signal switch. So you got all the switches out. Kind of remember to order. Pretty straightforward. Just snap them all back into place. And sometimes the new ones are a little bit on the tight side. You might have to manipulate them a little bit or even carve them a little, but you want them to stay in there nice and tight. So high beam, low beam switch. So nice with new switches. It makes, kind of gives it a 
new bike feel for only not much money. The switches don't cost all that much. And the horn button, I don't even know if the horn works, but it didn't work because there was no switch. In some ways it's really nice that you can replace these switches real inexpensively. Um, most most two-wheel vehicles, they have whole entire switch assemblies that have all the functions in one switch. So if one switch fails, uh, it's, it's a, a little bit more expensive. But sometimes those are a little higher quality than these inexpensive switches that are found on all the Vespas, but they're nice and easy to change out. So that's all ready to go. Uh, you could even put a new lens in, but I don't know, that looks perfectly satisfactory to me. All right, so let's get the rear handlebar cover back on. Pretty straightforward, just all the connectors. If you're unfamiliar with it, I would have tagged all these connectors, but um, they're all pretty straightforward. And a couple things not to forget speedometer cable that's all freshly lubricated and go ahead and just spin this little lock nut back in place here and the last thing is there's a little zip tie that holds this and we're going to kind of work on getting that boot up there they never really stay in place they've always been stubborn temperamental like that and sometimes they do the little zip tie trick other times i've seen ones without that's just kind of holding the uh throttle cable. This one's such an old model that it only has a single throttle cable. All the later stuff has dual throttle cables as a safety measure. So at this point, double check everything. Horn works. Turn sails work. Uh, high beam, low beam works. These headlights come on and then everything on the dash looks like it works as well. So, All right, so it's pretty straightforward. It's got the same kind of connection as a regular halogen headlight bulb. Go ahead and push that on. This is your running light. And it really doesn't make a difference on this because these models, uh, GTS, the headlight comes on the moment you turn the key on. Um, the older or the newer models, the headlight comes on after you start it until you got to the LED models and they just are always on. So I just tuck the wiring in there. And I got the, the front horn cover out of the way because it does make installation a lot easier. I should have taken that off in the first place. Obviously, if you don't have a glove box in place, it's even easier. But get it past the master cylinders. And there's a couple little tanks that you just need to make sure they all fit. Now, this thing's still in good, good shape despite being rather old plastic. and check the seam all the way down here. You can see I'm struggling with a little bit down here. So sometimes you just gotta flex things around. And we'll start to get the screws back in place. So the two tiny screws go in each left and right side here. And the last screw goes right in here. And of course, I kinda held that with my finger. Again, that's a little tricky screw. It's easy to drop down into the frame. So let's see if the headlight works. Oh yeah, that's working really good. High beam, low beam. So the reason I save this grip for last is because I wanna have the grip stop right at the, um, at the plastic of the handlebar. So it's hard to judge that point until you get the handlebar covers on. So I got the grip ends cut out and we got a tube of grip glue and on the Scooter West web store, it's Tool GG, so all one word, Tool GG. And it's kind of like pig snot, as I like to call it. You got to puncture the end. Obviously, you got to use this up, so you can't really let it sit around for a year. Typically, you want to put some of it in the grip, just on the side that goes in, and then it's kind of like a lubricant at first, and then it dries up, obviously, the glue the grip. And you don't want to get too crazy with it because it will drip all over your body work. Not too concerned with this one, but if it was a customer's bike that was really nice, I would probably put towels over everything. And oftentimes, you could just push it on. And if you're going to have a little bit of trouble with it, just take your compressed air and Pretty much push it right into the thing. And you can even stretch a little bit. 
kind of get the grip to do what you want it to do. Little gap is probably good. And the excess glue or pig snot, just wipe that right out of the end there. So I'll put the new bar end wastes and go ahead and put the screw in. So on these older GTSs, they have these brake reservoir covers. This is something they eliminated on the later ones to make a much more streamlined look. Um, they're very fragile, these little clips here, and same with the little tab here. But you get easy access to the brake fluid reservoir if needed. Um, depending on the types of mirrors, if you have the original mirrors, you're gonna need to pull these up and then tighten the mirror down. I'm gonna put a newer style mirror that has a longer, um, the nut that tightens down actually protrudes above the, these reservoir covers, so we're able to put them in. I prefer that style because you could easily tighten the mirror without removing these covers here that are rather fragile. So put those two screws back in, get these back in place. We know all the lights, everything works. There's no reason to take it all back apart, at least anytime soon. Don't worry, I'll have this thing back apart probably in a week or two for a video, of course. We'll get the mirror head right above the grip. Right about there is a good spot for it. And then these little covers, we'll just kind of hold it right back in place. Could also trim them a little bit. I'll work on them a little bit more, make them fit a little nicer later time. There's one more little mod I want to do just before I put the horn cover on. Probably one of the cooler things about these 250s, they have that, the horn cover running light. I always thought that looked really cool. And currently it's incandescent, just a standard bulb. I'll plug it back in and the color temperature is not gonna be very well suited to what the headlight is. So, ah, let's see, it's just straight burned out. It's incandescent bulb here. So, gonna pull the bulb out. So I put a new bulb in. This circuit is the same circuit as your taillight. My taillight is working fine, but I'm not getting power out of this. So guess what? The adventures of owning an old crusty scooter. So let's check it out and see what's uh, going on. All right, I gave up on that connector. I just found another one and crimped it in place. This one seems to be staying nice and reliable. Look at that, very bright. You can kind of change the angle of it. And we'll just get the handlebar cover back in. Nice thing about these LEDs, they can run for a while and they're not going to drain your battery. Uh, we'll get the screws all back in and put the badge on, put the rack on. So I got the ultimate bike guard. It's a nice kind of cleaner wax and it's a perfect opportunity to clean it. Kind of gives it a nice smooth finish. I'm mean, obviously a little other, other problems going on with this scooter. Why am I cleaning it when it looks Looks horrendous on the side, but there you go. Looks a little better. Just if I'm gonna put the, um, the rack back in place, this will look nice under there. So. All right, I removed the knee pads. Somebody already added this old Scooter West, um, like kind of cigarette lighter 12 volt outlet. It's not too useful these days. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it, but we're gonna repurpose the hole for a USB. That's much more useful, especially with most um, phones or GPSs. They want to have USB-C or quick charge 3.0 regular. Uh, the problem is that's a little larger, so I put the step drill bit. Try not to drill into my hands, but go up. And a lot of times you could just size this, try it. Still needs to go up a step. You there we go, I'm pretty certain that's the right size now. So, put this thing back in there. It should fit in there just nice. Close up that little cover. And now we have a USB charger. And so we already have the wiring harness. We'll go ahead and thread this in place and use that same 12 volt wiring harness. Works just fine for this. So red on the positive, black on the negative. Now we have USB power. If I'm gonna go on a longer trip, need my phone charging, use a GPS or something. Snap that back in place and go ahead and put the screw in. 
There we go. And I'm going to do the last mod I'm going to do tonight. I need to stop. I need to quit spending money is what I need to do here. So we're going to take the SP Connect Mirror Mount Pro. We're going to put that in the mirror stem. And they work very similar to the Ram Torque, Torque Mount. See it has everything you need. There's a couple different sleeves for different size mirrors. Pretty certain I can use the largest size on this diameter mirror. So put the sleeve on just like that. We'll separate out the mirror mount pro and even use the included Allen wrench. And it pretty much just has this little clamp here. I already have the case on my phone. So pretty, pretty straightforward, simple to install. And typically you don't want to tighten everything down. You kind of want to, with this setup, it's not like the ball joint, the double ball joint that you could adjust on a ram mount. You kind of want to get everything in position to do what you want it to do. Next we'll take this little device. That's what the actual case engages into and we'll get it approximately where it will be upright because I want the phone to be upright, portrait mode. You could set up for landscape or portrait, either way. Snap that in place. And again, I'm leaving all the screws loose right now because I want to kind of test it out. So the way this works is it's got this two little prongs. Just snap it in there. And I'll probably sit on the scooter, fine tune it, and just quickly go. There you go. Now I have navigation running, see the dash, no problems. Uh, this is in there tight, you can flip it over, um, and it's staying in there. So that's all I'm going to do for today. The scooter, got to save some of the steps. There's plenty more to do on this scooter, especially when it comes to the body work. So thanks for watching. Thought you'd find that pretty interesting. Time for me to go home. See you on the next one. It's a robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. And not too often I share my own stuff. It's not definitely not a nice scooter, but already made it a little nicer, at least for me to see when I'm riding it. See you on the next one, robot.